All right. So um, I thought it was about time to give a quick update on the um, SDR receiver, transceiver I've been building. And I uh, made a couple of uh, quite big changes to it in the last couple of days. And I thought I'd share it with you all. So let me just turn the... Um... Okay, we're back. As you can see, it's a crap day here in the UK at the moment. Pissing with rain. Okay, so whoop, bring that in. So we're in the shack. And those of you who know my radio will see that there's two new uh, additions. We have these two new knobs here. The top one is uh, very, very simple. It's just a rotary analog um, volume control to save uh, just to save going into that horrible uh, menu. And also, of course, when you turn the volume down now, you get silence with um, using the um, the menu volume control. You don't actually mute the audio completely. You've always got the audio. Um, you can always hear a little bit of it, a whiff of it in the background. So that's the first one. Just an analog volume control. All pretty simple stuff. And then the uh, second one. That's very exciting. So on these radios, um, I think it applies to all of the uh, like the Chinese ones, the white buttons the red corners the black bricks they've all got a pretty much um uh the same circuitry get for the microphone and it's just an electric microphone and um so very few uh, components um but not a lot of adjustment the only adjustment you've got is the transmit drive which doesn't just do the mic gain it's a fixed mic gain and i wasn't very happy with it i wanted to do more so what i've done is I've come this way we've built ourselves a very simple speech processor so that's it there it's based on a dual op amp uh, nothing spectacular and it's uh, based on a very old design the design I first used um, probably back in the 90s on a radio I built then and I've just tweaked it slightly and used uh, a modern chip so it'll run on five volt rails um the original design was designed to run on a <coughs> seven four series chip which needed 12 volt rails so just to run through uh how it works speech processor in line with the uh, the mic input um i've got a bypass switch on it so i can uh just switch it in and out I've now got a mic level um, there, mic drive, if you like, um, control, rotary control. Um, and the beauty of this is that I can now use my trusty old, very old, Shure Dynamic microphone. It's a Shure 550 um, mic, which has a lovely um, um, frequency response for uh, transmissions. Um, it's very similar to the um, the old standard back in the day, which was a triple four mic, which I did have one of those, but I let that go foolishly. Um, very very similar to that, but this is a bit lower impedance. This one was this one originally was intended more for public address systems, PA um, that type of thing, um, and it had a very low impedance compared to the triple four. So the idea was you could have a longer cable run. Um, from it um, so the nice thing is let's get back on on topic the nice thing is um, I can now use a dynamic microphone whether it's this whether it's a hail uh, whatever Sennheiser I can now use a dynamic microphone on this without um, worrying about it but what I've also done I've also incorporated this switch on the back of the uh, transceiver and what that does is um, <sighs> brings back the voltage for the electret so if i want to i can i can also go back to an electret microphone and use that via the speech processor um just with a flick of a switch i can switch between dynamic and electret um so i'm quite pleased with that that seems to work i've tried it on both and it works i had a couple of qso's with a um, local station allen 4 ppw on 80 meters 
and we did some tests and um, I was very pleased with the results. He gave me some great reports using the uh, processor. Um, you've got a processing level here. You can set the gain up of the first op amp by using that preset there. Um, I used a scope originally to set it up um, and then I did some final adjustments on air and it works really well. I'm really pleased with it. And then just as a get out of jail card, as I say, I can actually switch off the processor and it bypasses it completely and goes back to standard. So that's the, uh, the latest. Um, uh, the original design came from a very old article in Radcom during the 70s and then it was republished in um, Pat Hawker's Technical Topics book um, uh, in the 90s. Let me just have a look. They released a load of uh, articles. There you go, that's the... Uh, that's the, uh, the the circuit but as I say I've used a uh, 358 chip LM358 chip um, just so I can run it on 5 volts so that's the circuit and it seems to work really well the on air reports so far have been excellent so that's the latest on the, uh, the radio um, seems to be working really well worked some great DX with it um, I've got a little amplifier over there, one of those Chinese Alibaba amplifiers, AliExpress amplifiers. I think it's called a Mini PA70. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, I've blown up umpteen FETs in it, um, and I'm about to make a few modifications to it as well. Uh, that's a bandpass filter there for, um, no, low pass filter, sorry, for 21 megs. I've got hooked in at the moment. I've got a collection of filters um, but I've been concentrating on 15 metres. There have been some great um, conditions on 15 recently. But anybody thinking of using one of these amplifiers, I was getting RF feedback. Um, I was going to do a separate video on this, but I was getting RF feedback into the um, radio and I discovered that the SWR on the input to this amplifier, if you put an SWR meter between the radio and the amplifier, it was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. So the finals in the uh, radio didn't like it at all, and uh, it was producing all sorts of crap. So what I've ended up doing, I've ended up putting a Pi pad there. If you can see those three resistors, about two and a half dB of attenuation in a Pi pad. And that's uh, brought my SWR right down now, um, sort of below 1.5 to 1. Um, I think the highest band is 1.5 to 1, and the rest of them are down to about 1.1, 1.2 to 1. So that's worked really well. I also read about adding a 18 ohm resistor here. Um, originally, I put about 20 odd ohms in. It's across the primary of, of the, um, sorry, the secondary of the um, input matching uh, transformer um, I tried various values there and the article I read online said 18 was the best as a compromise across all bands and it certainly was that really helped bring down the VSWR but I found that that on its own wasn't quite enough but that in conjunction with the Pi um, attenuator there works really well and um, that's cleaned up all my um, transmit audio, lovely. I was getting reports of RF feedback. So there you are, that's um, the latest on the USDR. Uh, I was still messing around with the um, uh, pan adapter. Let me just uh, load it. It's not working today. Um, it's telling me that the service lost contact with a service API. Now, I don't know whether that means they want me to pay some money now for the software because I've had it for a while uh, without paying or whether there's just an issue uh, with their uh, server. Let's have a look. But it's certainly not working today. It was working yesterday. Yeah. So that's the message on... Let's see if I can zoom in on that. No, yep, there we go. Focus. So that's a message I'm getting. Anybody who knows the SDR uh, Uno software, 
feel free to tell me what I'm doing wrong but I suspect it's because I've never registered it and I'm pretty sure when I installed it it said you only had a certain amount of time uh, uh, free of charge so that's something I need to look at today which is a shame but nothing in life is for free is it so okay well have a good day and um, if you are uh, working on these uh, Chinese SDRs and you decide to add an amplifier do remember to check the VSWR between the radio and the amplifier that's crucial and um, if you uh, want details of the um, more in-depth details of the speech processor I've used then free, feel free to let me know and I'll point you in the right direction um, I might even upload the circuit diagram at some point there's no copyright or anything on it particularly um, it was first published in the uh, early 90s right okay um, that's it for now sorry that everything's in such a mess at the moment I've been uh, a little bit involved in uh, making stuff as you can see and um, I need to have a good old clear up now the radio is working again which I will do um, since my last video where we discussed whoops as he nearly drops that um, I've also brought one of the red corners I've uh, done a couple of shorts on it, YouTube shorts using it. Had some great results with this little radio, very impressed with it. Although I am going to rehouse it. Um, I've added this button here, so that's instead of pressing the encoder, with just a select button. Really easy to do. But I've got some ideas to uh, for this one. And um, that's going to be the next sort of big project, I guess. The trouble is, you know what it's like. You have all these uh, projects you start and all these ideas. And you never really seem to finish them. So uh, there you are. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's some use for people. The main um, reason for this video was just to introduce you to the, uh, the speech processor there. And uh, I'm really pleased with it. And now I've come back to my trusty uh, Shaw microphone. Okay, well, right, seven threes for now, everybody. And um, hopefully catch you again some other time. Cheers.